survival, as Wendy Hurrell has been finding out. Lunch service at the India Club. They've been dishing up authentic South Asian food here since 1951. The bar and canteen has barely changed since. It has its loyal customers. Will Self has a favourite table in the corner. It's much more like an, a genuinely Indian restaurant in India, and that's what it reminded me of in the early 80s. And then, of course, as the years have gone by, uh, and outside the world has grown faster and shinier and more screen-mediated, the Indian Club restaurant has remained exactly the same. It's not just the decor and cuisine that has made this place so important to the Indian community in London. You are in a place where you don't know a soul, and uh, the only place you hoped to meet somebody was India Club. It was set up by India's first High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. At London's India House, High Commissioner Krishna Menon swears allegiance to the newly born Republic of India. And was a place to discuss politics and India's new independence. I don't think there is any other place in the whole United Kingdom which has this particular platform for both the communities to not only f eat wonderful food, but also to discuss and debate issues of the day. But next year, the lease runs out, and there's a planning application to turn the building into a hotel. The family running the India Club are now reluctantly in the spotlight as custodians of its heritage. Some people have told us, why can't you just move India Club to another building? But it's really the events and the memories which are, which are kind of soaked up in the walls of this place, which you just can't replicate. So what we try to now do is get in touch with Historic England to try and get the place listed and get heritage status. The owner of the building, Marston Property, says no decision has been made to redevelop it. Exploring planning possibilities is just one option. And it's working with Historic England to establish the heritage of this place. One until now little known to those passing by on the Strand. Wendy Hurrell, BBC London News.